Alrighty, if you want to read along, this is posted on the front page of our D2L section. I expect that all of y'all are probably, you know, had previous semesters here, you know what D2L is. If you do not, it stands for Desire to Learn, and you access it by going to d2l.rose.edu. And then you'll be prompted with a password and a, uh, you know, user ID, which are the same ones that you log on to the computers. I can't tell you your password, but I can tell you your user ID if you do not know it. Then you just click on a class, you get in here, there's this introductory page here. Then there's the syllabus, which covers a lot of the same material. There's a little bit of a uh, duplicate there. That's okay. By the time we get to the syllabus and we'll be able to whiz through it, we will already have discussed it. So, I'm Professor Thompson. You can call me Professor Thompson. You can call me Hey You. You can call me Jeff, whatever. Just don't call me bad names. It'll hurt my feelings. Please feel free to contact me day or night. You know, that's my personal phone number, not the office phone number. If I'm asleep, I just won't answer the phone. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm smart enough to put the phone, you know, <laughs> aside. Texting is a really good way of handling um, programming classes. If you get stuck on something, and Python is a very particular language, won't work even if you misindent something, you know, if you have too many spaces in it. It's kind of nitpicky that way. Can't see it, just take a picture of it, text it to me, and I'll probably be able to spot it and turn around and give you an answer like within 10 minutes unless you know I'm teaching or asleep or something. So if y'all would be so kind, and even if you've had me in the past and you think I have your phone number, please do this anyways. Everybody grab their phone and go ahead and send me a text message. And just put CIT1203 followed by your name. The reason we do that is that saves it in your Dropbox. And like I said, even if you've had me in the past, please do that. That way you save my name and my number in your, uh, you know, in your contacts. That'll encourage you. And this being Oklahoma, you never know whether we're going to have 70 degree weather or a nice storm. If I find out that the class is canceled, I will text everybody whose number I have. I am not proceeding until I get some numbers. Okay, Adrian was the first. <laughs> Zach, excellent. So, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. You know when and where to meet, because you're already here. Since we missed Monday, we're going to have to put in um, an extra hour and a half here, so you're not leaving until 10. I'm totally kidding. We're actually going to get out early, because we're going to cover the syllabus, we're going to cover the introductory material, I'll ask y'all to write a very, very short little document, and then, um, then we'll be done. So what are we going to learn? We're going to learn the concepts of programming with the scripting language Python. You may already have learned Python. If you've taken CIT 1113, it's very likely that you have an introduction to Python. If so, we're going to be going further with it. If you don't know Python, but you've taken another programming course or you've done programming in the past, that's also okay. You'll just have to, you know, understand that half the class has a basic knowledge of Python and you'll need to stretch in order to catch up. On the other hand, you have other programming knowledge that they don't. So that's also cool. If you've never done any Python programming and you've never done any other programming classes or on-the-job programming either, then it's going to be a little bit more iffy. You don't have to drop the class, it's just useful to know that. So, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to try to ascertain is to see, you know, where everybody is. You don't have to be a programming expert to be in here. I'm assuming that y'all are beginning programmers. So we'll learn how to write applications that process data, that read and write files, that display graphical user interfaces, using concepts such as lists, dictionaries, functions, and classes. Hopefully we'll do that for about the first eight weeks of the class, and then the last four weeks of the class we will use JavaScript to make interactive web pages. So that'll be kind of like a left turn. We'll be doing something completely different towards the end. But it's, JavaScript is pretty much what drives web pages nowadays. I'm glad they're having a good time. If you do right click and view page source, you usually see either a whole bunch of JavaScript code or to reference JavaScript libraries like this. And then if you click that, you see that. Okay, so Brightspace is referencing, you know, look at all this code. So 
back in the old days, if you use computers in the 90s and you got on the web, the web pages were pretty simple and they weren't interactive. What JavaScript does is it allows the creation of interactive web pages. So uh, everybody wants interactive web pages. They want things, you know, with shopping carts and things that light up as they move their mo uh, mouse over and validation so that if you type in something, it tells you, you know, it's incorrect or whatever. So JavaScript is really important if you're going to be doing any web development in the future. If you're not going to be doing any web development in the future, it's still useful to know, just to have it kind of tucked away in the background. And as a security person, you're definitely going to want to know how to use a programming language in order to write software to do stuff. So the Python will be useful. We are going to close the door a little bit. All right, so for textbooks, you're not going to have to buy a textbook. Professors, a couple professors have been writing a textbook to use in our scripting courses. In the past, I have been using a different one that, uh, you know, costs 100 or 120 bucks or whatever. I'm switching over to that one, so hopefully, you know, we'll be good. You won't have to buy anything. I don't have the uh, URL for it yet because uh, the copy that I was given was corrupted and I wanted to uh, get a fresh one for it. So you're not going to have anything to read over the weekend, or if I get it and I upload it, you know, by, uh, by Friday, I'll send you an email so you can look at it. So I'm going to ask you to read the syllabus. I'm also going to go over in class. You can find the important class information up on the content page, which is accessible via the course tools menu. Sounds complicated, but you know where this is because you've probably used D2L before. You go up to course tools, choose content, and then you get all sorts of folders. You know, Right now there's not a lot here. But as the uh, lectures are uploaded, the videos that I create are uploaded, they'll be here. As the notes that I take are uploaded, they'll be here. If I make any PowerPoints for you, which I'm certainly going to be doing, they'll be uploaded there as well. You'll find everything there except for your assignments. You can also get to that stuff from the quick, let's see, zoom out so it looks the same on mine as it does you, the quick links menu over here. This is just a little shortcut to the stuff that's in the contents folder up here. Exact same stuff. So the syllabus is in the class information. There's a couple documents in the important school information, like if you want to go look at the student handbook or important spring dates. What's the most important spring date? Spring break. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And then a link to the Dropbox, which isn't, you know, it just takes you to the same place that Clicking Course Tools Dropbox does. Just, you know, two links to the same place. You'll see, oh no, we already have homework. I bet half of y'all already have Python installed, but that will be the homework assignment, is just to get Python up and running on your computer at home. If you're not going to do development on your computer at home, that's okay, because you can always use the computer lab that's right across the hall. It also has Python installed on it. So we've discussed the syllabus. No, we haven't, but we're getting going to get there. We will use the Python 3 scripting language. There are two major versions of Python that are kind of currently out there, Python 2 and Python 3. Not everybody has switched over to Python 3, even though it's more than a decade old now. It's just different syntaxes and stuff like that. So uh, if in the future you're asked to maintain Python 2 code, then it may look a little bit different, but you'll just grab a manual and figure out the differences. And then something called the idle editor. There, there's more than one editor for Python. Idle comes with Python, so you don't have to install anything extra once you install Python. That's the only reason that, uh, well, <coughs> since it's the default one, it's the one that we're going to use. Why is it called Idle? Because the author of the Python language loves Monty Python Flying Circus, and Eric Idle was a key member of, okay, anyways. So you may install these tools on your home computer. You will find it advantageous to do so. You can even do Python on oddball things like Chromebooks and iPads and stuff like that, but you can't use all the libraries that we'll be using. So there are also online websites where you can do Python development. You type in a program and you run it there. Kind of an odd idea, but by far the best thing to do is to install it on your computer. Works on Macs, works on PCs, Windows PCs, works on Linux, so you'll be all set. So assignments... And due dates are all posted in the Dropbox. You'll just scroll up, 
course tools Dropbox right now there's very little there we will add on as we go I'm using or creating different course material than I have in past semesters just because I don't have that textbook now so y'all save money and I do more work that that sounds like a fair exchange save money, yeah okay so we'll go over the way the due dates work and the assignments work in a moment my office hours Monday and Wednesday Tuesday and Thursday I teach all evening so I can't really promise I'll have much time before or after class to hang with y'all which is unfortunate because my ideal thing is that after class is done then we can hang out for 20 or 30 minutes you know and work on programs or something unfortunately I have to scuttle down the hall you know and teach another class so if you need to meet with me hopefully you can make it during any of this time if you cannot let me know because I can come in on Tuesday or Thursday afternoons looks like I'm doing nothing but I'm actually teaching courses there and then I'm going home and then I'm coming back at 8:30. so if you need to meet me in the evening it would need to be Tuesday or Thursday if none of that works then uh, we can meet on Friday but you will find if you give it a try that texting with me will probably get the vast majority of your questions answered so that our face-to-face -face meetings will not be as necessary free stuff software the only stuff we need is down here at the bottom the Python development however as a student here you can access Microsoft tools as well like Visual Studio and project and various versions of Windows you just follow this link and uh, it'll anyways I recall I forget the exact process you fill in a user ID and then it sends an email to an administrator here and she okays you to, to download all the stuff and then there's VMware so if you want to run virtual machines so that you can have multiple you know sessions of Windows running on your machine at the same time you can do that if you want Microsoft Office for free this is not run by us so we can't absolutely promise that it'll work but right now Microsoft is offering office for free for students so you can just go there and grab it if you don't already have it I think it works for the Mac too I know that I have a, a version of Mac that I did not purchase so you ought to be good yes sir is there somewhere we could get Windows 7 or Windows 10 free or not even for free Dream Spark should allow you to download a personal version. Yeah, I just downloaded it. It's free. That'd be awesome. Yeah. 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 That's how I you know, refresh my PC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. All right, if you want to do Java development, there's a link to, uh, to Oracle's website to do that. All right, so policies. We're getting into the exciting stuff now. Contain your, uh, contain your pulse rates. Here we go. Whenever you view a link in D2L and it pops up in this preview, you may be happy with it, but if it's a power if it's a uh, yeah, a PowerPoint with that's 40 or 50 pages long, this preview is going to really stink. So you're going to want to download it and view it. But for PDFs it's fine, but I'm going to pop this open anyways. So, that's my name, Jeff Thompson. I'm downstairs in room 102. My office hours are posted. If you want to get in touch with me, there's my phone number. You've already entered it into your phone. If you want to email me, you can either email me through D2L or you can just, you know, jgthompson at rose.edu. The prereq listed is for you to have taken CIT 1113. And I recognize a fair number of your faces, so I know a lot of y'all have. If you have not taken the prereq, then I just kind of need to know what you do know so we'll work with that in a minute the format of the course it's a hybrid course meaning that there is a lecture component which is when I'm sitting up here and we're working on stuff together and then there's an online component pretty much the online component is just the uh, you know the assignments that uh, you can download and work on on your own and uh, you know any PDFs and you know online books and stuff like that but you'll be able to watch the videos as well so if you miss a day, you can watch a video, you can follow along and do the online assignment and upload it, you know, even though you didn't get it done that day, that's totally cool. I'm going to give you credit for it as long as you get it done in a month. I would, I, would, I would do it more quickly than a month just so that the information is fresh in your head. So if you miss a day, just plan, you know, on the next day or the weekend or whatever watching the lecture. You'll be a lot better off if you do watch the lectures you miss than if you don't. I really promise that. 
Okay, so your technical requirements, you're going to need Windows, Mac, or Linux with the Python development environment. If you don't have that, I would plan on uh, using the lab up here. If you're not going to do either of those things and you want to do something uh, perverse, like do it on an iPad or a Chromebook, yeah, you're, you're kind of on your own. I'll help you a little bit. <laughs> this statement is needs to go. The course is not de delivered entirely online. During the fall, it is. During the spring, it's a lecture class. So what will we be learning? Scripting, using the Python language, understanding arrays, lists, dictionaries, parameter passing, class creation, using libraries to display windows and graphics, input and output so that you can type stuff into your program. It can read from a file, write to a file, and to create web pages with JavaScript. Competency will be measured through the use of assignments, chapter quizzes, and two exams. I say two exams here and then down here in the schedule. I say three exams. Apparently I'm schizophrenic. I'm not sure which we're going to do. I would uh, bank on having three exams, so I need to revise that. Information on where to go for help if you can't log in is on that page. You forget your password or you can't access email. Everybody knows that you have an email account, right, at Raider, at you can go to Gmail and just uh, say, you know, my name at raider.rose.edu. So great. We will do stuff in class. So those are the tutorials. I will often call them in-class assignments because we're doing them in class. Also, occasionally there will be quizzes posted. Quizzes, ooh, scary. Not really. If you don't make a perfect grade on the quiz, you can just take it again if you want. Yeah. You make a 70 out of 100, no problem. Just take it again and get 100. I consider the quizzes to be a learning tool more than a proficiency measuring tool, if that makes sense. Where does your proficiency get measured? When you actually do the homework. So, assignments may be given from the book. Well, that's not going to work. Or from material created by the professor. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then exams. We'll have a couple of exams, a couple to three. Each one's worth about a third of the grade. There is kind of a caveat here, though. If this makes it look like you could make 100% on the exams, come in and take 100% of the daily assignments where you're just typing in, you know, along with me, and then completely blow off the homework and pass the class, you actually need to finish 50% of the programming homework. If I assign 10 homework assignments, I want you to do at least five. I want you to do them all. But if you don't do five of them, then I consider that you didn't demonstrate that you, that you can program, and so you won't pass the course. I almost never have to invoke that rule. I can't give you great information through email or text, so uh, it will always be posted online in D2L. The important dates, spring break. The last day to withdraw is sometime in April, and then our final exam is on a Monday in May, May 8. We might shift the exam dates a little bit around. If so, you'll get ample notice, at least a week, that that has changed. So, grading policies. The program has to at least be able to run in order to get credit. And I'll give you an example of a program that doesn't run. Don't type this in because it's not going to run. What I did is I loaded idle, the editor. I did file new. I'm going to change the options so that you can actually see what I'm typing here. Change the, blow up the font as big as I possibly can, make it bold. And then I'm going to type something that doesn't work. Name is equal to, I don't know, Tony Stark print name. That is actually valid Python 2 code. In Python 3, you have to surround that with parentheses. So this isn't going to work. So by the time I do a save as, and save it somewhere, I'm going to make a folder on my desktop to save these things in. So I'm going to call it scripting. And then I'm going to give it the name hello. Okay. It's not going to work. So I choose run, run module, boom, it blows up. If it blows up when I run your assignment, you're not going to get any credit. You'll get one out of 100. That doesn't mean you have to panic and throw yourself off a bridge. It just means that I want you to revise it and make it work. And I will put a comment to that effect 
in the feedback on the Dropbox. So don't turn in anything that doesn't work like that. If you if you run it and you get that error, then I'm I I know that you know it did on yours. You didn't care enough to to get it to work, and I'm not going to care enough to give you a good grade on it. That sounds brutal, but I can't figure out what your program was supposed to do if it doesn't even run. Now that doesn't mean that if it runs halfway through and then breaks because of a logic problem or something like that, yeah, you're going to get more credit for that. But if it just flat out doesn't run from the get-go, or if it has an obvious syntax error, then I'm going to want you to fix that before I grade it. Another grading policy is if it doesn't meet all the requirements, but it at least runs and does something. Like what if I wanted you to write a program that would put, you know, six circles on the screen, and instead you put six squares? <laughs> That's a silly example. Or you're supposed to write a payroll program and you forget to take into account, you know, overtime or something like that. So you have a lot of functionality there. You worked really hard on it and you, you got a result. You thought it was right or you thought it was close. Or you asked me and I said, well, go ahead and submit it and then keep working on it. You'll get, you know, partial credit for it. I may give you 70% or whatever. That doesn't mean, oh, man, I made a C on it, you know. All it means is you need to fix it. If you revise it and upload it again, you're going to get more credit for it. Because in the real world, if somebody finds a bug, you know, in the program, you don't quit your job, hopefully, and unless it's a real mean workplace. Uh, there was a one a very infamous programming error that caused a uh, $100 million Martian probe to slam into the planet rather than orbit it. And the only problem was that the units were supposed to be in metric but that somebody had fed it data, you know, in uh, English units, miles and stuff like that. And so it just slammed into the planet rather than applying. You know, whoever made that mistake, I'd feel really bad for them. But we're not doing anything that, uh, that's going to, you know, impact people like that. So if you don't get full credit for it or, you know, just read the feedback, I will most likely say revise your program to take over time into account. Or... No, these were supposed to be circles, remember? You know, or whatever. And uh, fix it, upload it, you'll probably get an A on it. So generally, program assignments are due a week from when they are assigned. If I gave you an assignment today, I'd want you to get it done by Tuesday midnight so that we could talk about it next week. Unless spec specified otherwise. If I think it's a really complex assignment, you might get more time. If it's due during spring break, no, I'm not going to make it due during spring break because I'm going to have two weeks. All the due dates will be specified in D2L. You'll never have to wonder. If you turn in something on time, woo, you get a 10% bonus for it. So you can build up bonus credit. You know, if you turn in 10 assignments on time, this is for the homework, not the in-class assignments. Then, uh, you know, 10 on-time assignments is equal to 100% extra credit. That's an entire assignment you could blow off at the end of the semester or, you know, if you bombed it or whatever. Plagiarized assignments will be rejected. Only 1% credit will be given for that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Academic dishonesty will be brought to the attention of the department head. It's actually important, and I need to give you all some warnings about that. I don't you know, It's like... It only happens once every other semester or so, but it's very frustrating when it does. Late homework. If it's late, well, if you got it early, you got a 10% plus. If it's late, you get a 10% minus if it's within a week. Each week after that's another 10% up to a maximum of 50% off. I might waive the penalties for late assignments if you talk to me. You know, you say, hey, I'm pregnant, I'm giving birth, I'm probably not going to be doing your homework for a week. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> or, you know, you have to go to Wisconsin because, you know, you know, a family death or whatever. Just let me know. Let me know. Um, you know, if you don't turn it in and you don't let me know, then I'm going to assume that you don't care. If you do let me know, then I assume you do care. And I work really hard to help the students who do care. Along with that, I'll say that I want everybody to make an A. I don't mind turning in a grade sheet at the end of the semester that has 80% of the people making A's or 90% of the class making A's and B's. I want you all to do good. Don't accept, don't target a C. You can go ahead and, and target an A. 
if you have a high likelihood of doing it. You just have to do the work. But, you know, a third of your grade is just based on the in-class assignments. So in a way, you get a 33% credit just for showing up. And that's pretty cool. Then, uh, you know, you do some exams, you do some homeworks, and you're already up to passing. But you want to do better than passing. You want to use this knowledge in the future. You want to learn it well. So aim for an A. You got to be able to get it. I'm not a super-duper hard grader. This is not a cut course designed to weed you out from the, from the program. All righty. When it's time to upload an assignment, typically what I want is the Python script, the PY file. I may ask you for something else. When I do this as an online course, I ask for screenshots and stuff like that. So I may ask you to take screenshots. Most likely, I will not. But if I do want something extra other than a PY script, it will be specified in the requirements. I really want you to be here on exam days. If you can't make an exam, then you know we'll talk about it. Here where it says we only meet one day a week. No, we actually meet two days a week. Last spring, we only met one day a week, and it really wasn't enough. We didn't get to cover the material well enough, so I need to take that out of the syllabus. My apologies. My apologies. Yeah, that was a rough semester because not only were we meeting only one day a week, we kept getting snowed out. So we missed a lot of days. It really. Videos of the projector screen will usually be posted, but if I forget to start the recorder, then there's nothing I can do to go back in time and fix it. So do not stake your life on the fact that the videos will be there. I will take that into account if you can't do the daily assignment because you missed a class and it's my fault that I didn't take a video. You know, but usually they're going to be there. One thing you need to know is that if you skip the first two weeks of a class, you're going to, uh, this makes it sound optional, maybe assigned, you will be given an AW if you skip the first two weeks, which means you get dropped from the course and um, that it shows up on your transcript. And if anybody like the government was giving you money, grant money or something to go to school, they're going to come back and take it from you. So fortunately, everybody's here. You all don't have to worry about that. We'll take attendance and find out about the people who do. If you just flat out can't complete the course, you know, you get about three-fourths of the way through the course, and then it turns out, whoops, i got to go on TDY, and oh, no, all this happened, and you just flat out can't finish the course. Then we can talk about an incomplete. But I find that the people who take the incompletes rarely go back and finish it, so I really want you all to finish it. If you have a disability, if, uh, you know, you have dyslexia or, you know, you probably have already talked to the Office of Disabilities. If not, I strongly encourage you to do so. They'll help you. They'll, they'll make forms and send them to your instructors saying what you need. Um, things that I've had to provide in the past are, you know, extra, extra time on exams or, you know, sometimes I've even sat next to the person and helped them through the exam reading the questions for them because they had a severe reading disability. Oddly enough, they could program really well. Um, some people have, you know, difficulty moving their hands. So, you know, just let, let me know and then go to these guys and uh, let them know so that they can forward the information to your instructors and we'll give you the help that you need. Academic dishonesty. Don't cheat. What does cheating mean? Don't sh give each other your programs. In class, it's totally cool. I want you all to buddy up. If you get your program done and you're stuck because you forgot a space or a tab or something stupid like that, just go, put the tab there. Don't, don't use bad words because that's going to hurt the feelings. But anyways, y'all can help each other. It's totally cool to do that on the in-class assignments. I want you all to do that. Why? This is a far larger I've taught in the lectures in the fashion, and we have twice as many people. So if I have to go to everybody's screen and spend two minutes fixing syntax errors on your things, then we're not going to make as much progress as if y'all are helping each other and I only have to get half of them. You know what I mean? So please be, I mean, if you don't want to help the person next to you, that's okay. You know, you're antisocial. I don't care. But uh, if you do want to help each other, that's totally cool. But that doesn't mean you have a programming buddy that you can do your homework with. You need to do your own homework. So you can't ask them, hey, what did you do for homework assignment four? Can I look at it? And then this is just a warning. If anybody ever asks to look at your program, it's more than likely that they're going to turn in your work as their own, even if they promise not to. I've even had people turn in work and not change the names, you know. 
All right, Sarah, why did you upload a program called Tanya.zip? Did, did you maybe get that from Tanya? You know, <laughs> so, you know, don't take somebody else's program and upload it as your own. That's the most obvious form. Don't work on them together. I'm your programming buddy. You know, ask me for help. I will bend over backwards making sure that uh, you understand the material. I will set up, you know, office dates, whatever we need to do. So, I'm your programming buddy. The other thing that people might do is if you get stuck on a programming problem, well, typically Google is the programmer's best friend. You don't remember how to use a list. You Google up how to use a list. You get an example of it. It's better than any textbook because essentially every text is out on the Internet. That's totally cool. But if I give you a specific programming problem, use this algorithm in order to calculate the square root or write a Caesar cipher program that accepts this input and produces this output. You know, I'll give you some specs. If you're just blown away by it, you may be tempted to Google up Caesar cipher. Oh, hey, there's one. Copy, paste, upload. I'm going to be able to tell that you didn't write it. For one thing, the person who wrote it probably is, you know, an experienced developer with a dozen years under their belt, and they're going to be using stuff that I don't understand, much less you. So, and then with um, three seconds worth of Googling, I'm going to be able to tell where you got it from. Don't do that. Um, I only mention it because it's actually happened. You know, that these things are very rare, but, but they happen. The more common thing is that people want to work together on the programs. And so if I do think that two people's programs are too similar to each other, or if two people turn in the exact same zip file or something like that, you know, if it's obvious, you're both going to get zeros. The most lenient I'm going to be is I'll ask you all to rewrite it and to make it obviously your own. That, that, that would be leniency and then maybe you'll get credit for it, or you may be stuck with that zero on that particular grade, and if it happens a second time, then we would uh, raise the issue with the dean. So that's almost enough said about that. The last thing is, is that the exams are given online on the computer, you know, multiple choice and fill in the blank and stuff like that. Don't be sitting there emailing each other, please. Why do I say that? I've had it happen. I walked over and I saw somebody's Gmail account, you know, with, with, with something, you know, a screenshot. Uh, but don't do that. I don't want to have to wander around going. <laughs> so I trust y'all because I've said that. Y'all are good students. I typically find uh, Rose students to be way more honest in total than uh, at some of the other places I've taught at. So it's not going to be a problem, right? Nobody's going to text. You're going to keep your phones in your pockets during exams. Speaking of uh, phones, I don't see this section in here, but don't do stuff that's going to distract people. Don't play games on your computers that, you know, before class, fine, after class, fine, but uh, not during the thing that, if that's going to distract the people sitting next to you or behind you. Don't listen to headphones. Don't smoke vapes. Um, believe it or not, when they first came out, people, some people thought, hey, that's not smoking, so I can do it. No, you can't do it. I'd have to ask you to stop. One of the silliest things was when I had two people sitting on the back row and they were using their portable playstations to play Street Fighter or something like that. And I had to tell them, don't do that, guys. And I felt like a jerk for doing it, but, you know, they were actually distracting people. And then um, people had some Nintendo DSs a couple years later. And they were playing Smash Brothers or something like that. I, again, I had to get on their case. I don't want to get on anybody's case. Just don't do stuff that will distract people. I think that is about enough. What I want to do next is firstly take a roll. If I mispronounce your name, please correct me. There's something wrong with my brain. I have a hard time remembering names. So be lenient. Just correct me. Adrian. Anaya, mm -hmm. did I get it right this time? Yes. Yay, all right. For a while I was trying to call her Ania, and then that was really stupid. Okay, Denise. There you are. Jocelyn, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Good. Josiah, there you are. Kenneth. Is this Keon? Did I get that right? 
Close enough? Okay. Kevin White. There you are. Lauren. There you are. After a while, I'm just going to start handing out attendance sheets because this is, you know, takes a while. Matthew. Here. Except we have more than one Matthew. Matthew Johnson. Yep. All righty. Matthew Tucker. There you are. Michael. Here. Cool deal. And I, I apologize. I do not know how to pronounce this. Mianyan Yang. Yeah. Rebecca. I am amazed. So far, we have 100% attendance. That almost never happens. Sean. Yeah. Shelby. Yep. Two. There you are. And Zach. There you are. Whoa, that is awesome. I don't have to send out any email warnings about AWs for this class. I'm so happy. Okay. All right. Two things I want us to do. Firstly, go to the quiz section, and we're going to take our first exam. I'm kidding. I, I see that four people have already done this. Yeah, you were bored. I understand. So um, just go there, and there's just three questions. You're going to get 100% no matter what. I am participating in this scripting class. This is the stupidest one, but for the online students, it's the, the, the fastest way for me to, you know, take them off the AW list. Just click true there. I have taken the prerequisite CIT 113 class or another programming class. That's likely true. If it's not, let me know. And if you have taken programming courses or have programming experience, please list them. And even if I had you last semester, just go ahead and put CIT 1113 or whatever the other programming course was, Java in high school, you know, um, senior developer for Enix software. You know, no, I'm kidding. But anyways. And then just click Save on each one of those and click Submit Quiz. I really wouldn't expect that to take more than the amount of time that I've already talked you through it. No wrong answers. It just helps me gauge if we're going to have to play much catch up or not. And it's okay if we do because essentially we're going to start at the beginning. We're just going to go a lot more quickly than we did in um, CIT 1113. I have one unanswered question. No, I didn't. Oh, it looks like I did. <coughs> All right, next thing I want us to do is we're going to do our first in-class assignment, except it's going to be the one time that I don't type along and have you copy. Instead, I'm hoping that you remember enough of your scripting in the past to do this. I don't have the folder open, sorry. I forgot. Let me go do that. <coughs> so go to the Dropbox. And now you actually can't access it. There's a Word doc. Just pop that open. Pop the Word doc open. And I ask you to write an itty bitty short little program. I don't care if it works. You can just type it into this Word document. You don't have to open a Python editor or whatever. And I want you to ask for the user's name, print the message hello, and use a loop to print the numbers 1 through 10. You don't know Python? Do it in C++. Do it in Java. You don't know any of that stuff? Just write, I have no idea, and upload it. You'll still get 100%. I'm not grading you on this. This is just another tool to see, you know, whether people remember what they learned or whether you haven't taken, you know, a programming class in the past. Pardon me? You can just type it directly into the document because I don't care if it runs or not. If it's close, you know, that's good. If it's not close, it's still good. Just let me know. Just upload it. So type it in, save the document, and upload it. And by the way, you'll probably want to get a flash drive, you know, just a thumbnail drive, because you never know when one of these machines are going to die, and uh, you'll lose all your work. You'll be, you know, expecting to sit at the same place at the same computer every time and halfway through the semester. Or, yeah. Yep, yep. That did happen. 
that we had to redo all that later. Yeah, so just just expect the worst and back all your work up to a flash drive. Some of the computers, classroom computers, refresh themselves every night, so none of the work gets saved. I do not believe these to be though that case. If we find out that to be the case, you'll certainly want to bring a flash drive. Oh, okay, okay, cool. I was about to get really puzzled and say, haven't you already had scripting? But no, that was uh, 1113. Yeah, okay. When you're done with your Word doc or whatever you're doing it in, just upload it to the Dropbox. The very last thing we'll do is I'll actually give you the answer to it. It should be in the Word doc. You should be able to see it. I mean, I don't mind reading it again, but, but it's there. So I expect all of y'all know how to use D2L, but I'll walk you through it anyways. I can't decide whether I want to record that part or not. I think I want to not.